which today was the day that I wanted to take a look at our backlog and make sure that we're starting to do the thing that we decided on last time, which was having the primary uh, focus of the working group, or at least the, you know, the first thing we deliver being like a cohesive backlog for others to look at. Um, so that's what I'm going to try and look at today. Um, and I'm looking at last week's action items, and I did not do either of these. So today, I will want to clearly highlight these performance tickets um, as part of this backlog grooming. Um, and we'll also ask anyone else on the call to sort of highlight anything they think is of top uh, priority so that we make sure that it's, it's presented well. Um, for today, we might as well go around and do a little interactive attendance. Um, I wanted to make sure that everyone's getting a chance to introduce themselves, especially if there are folks who haven't showed up in a while or are their first time at this meeting. Uh, so I'll just start with me. Um, I'm Emerson Knapp. I'm at uh, AWS um, for this. I worked on delivery robots doing this working group a lot these days. So hello. Um, I'll go to Aaron next. Yes. Aaron, also, uh, also at Amazon. Um, done a Bunch of different robots. Really like mobile manipulators. That's uh, that's me in a nutshell. Devin. Hey, yeah, I work with uh, Aaron and Emerson at Amazon. In the previous life, I worked on ocean drones. Uh, how about Alfonso? If you're there, I'm not sure. We get some folks who dial in. Oh, there you are. Mm. You are talking, we're not hearing you, unfortunately. I do see that you've unmuted yourself a few times. Well, um, if you want to type something into the chat, that also works. <laughs> Hello. Uh, perhaps Christoph? Hey, uh, I'm Christoph. I'm a student from Montreal. Uh, I've been working at Apex AI for less than a year now, almost a year. Uh, and I like to work on everything and anything really in my free time. So yeah. Nice. Uh, Dirk. Yeah, I'm at Open Robotics, um, former Willow, and well, usually just working on the software. It's very rare that we actually touch a robot, unfortunately. <laughs> but anything to make everything work on robots. Yeah. Karsten. Hi. Uh, work for work for Bosch. Spent four years now. Um, mainly concerned about ROS2 and and how to bring that in our in our robot fleet. And it, yes, it's been too long that I touched a robot as well. It's going to be time. <laughs> yeah. All right, Louise. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Louise from Open Robotics. I work mainly on simulation, so virtual robots. Not very good with hardware. It's very hard. <laughs> Matt? Oh, hi, I'm a contractor from DCS working with the Army's uh, ground vehicle robotics group. Yeah. Cool. Welcome. Um, I think I've seen you on the list here before. Yeah, I work with PJ Reed and oh, yeah. Reed has been more active. Cool. And then Ted? Yeah, uh, I'm Ted. I work with Canonical, a uh, member of the security working group. Uh, and in a past life, I worked in field robotics uh, at uh, NREC and later at JPL. Nice. And yesterday, I believe I gave you a hard time about some change on the linter code. <laughs> After Sorry about that. It looks like we're all good now. Yeah, I, I kind of forgot about that detail of Python 3.6 existing. Oh, yeah. I mean, why? Um, I remember you just look at the docs and you're like, oh, that's a good feature. I'll use it. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So um, I think in order to, uh, that's everyone who's on the call if I didn't mess it up. But um, thanks everyone for coming today. I appreciate the interest. Uh, uh, like I said, today is I think going to be mostly about making sure that our backlog is in a usable state. Um, uh, from last time, we wanted to clearly call out the performance uh, issues that Adam brought up. Um, 
for those of you who didn't see that presentation, really useful breakdown on where the current performance bottlenecks are in Rossbag and some really low hanging fruit that we can implement to fix it. Um, so I'm going to just make sure that I say these things here when we get to that. Um, so check. I don't think we have any um, PRs on the community repo, but I like to make sure to take a look at those every meeting just as a manner of making sure everything's up to date. Yeah, OK, we've got nothing, no issues. Um, and for those of you who are unfamiliar, this is the place where you would um, you know, request donating a sub project or changing something about the governance model. Uh, right now, we are very close to the template that we made because um, uh, uh, Kyle, Economical, and I uh, worked together on making that template for the working group. So I integrated as much of it as I could into here without you know, contradicting anything we, are, we were already saying when we started the working group. Um, so cool. let's take a look at our backlog. Um, we are using this Zen Hub backlog. Um, and right now I'm looking at it without <laughs> um, I'm looking at it without any pull requests on. Sorry, I just saw Aaron's message about a therapy session for those of us who don't have robot contact. <laughs> uh, I could use it. I've got a uh, mostly disassembled TurtleBot 3 here is the best I got right now. <laughs> oh. Anyways, so I'm just going to link in here. So for those, of, oh, and that is the the GitHub link, which you can only see if you have the extension. Um, but the Zen Hub link itself should always work, even if you don't have a uh, browser extension. Pretty long lists, but um, that way everyone can see it easily. Cool. Um, I think the one thing that I'd like to probably pay the most attention to is finding bugs in the new issues column. I was thinking that um, the way we can prioritize things, and maybe we want to formalize this somehow, is that um, like as a working group, we place the highest priority on um, bugs and stability. And then you know new feature work pretty much comes in some ordered bag after that. Um, I imagine performance goes at the top of the feature work pile. Um, and I'm not sure how we might decide that some bugs are not a high priority, but for now it seems a safe policy to just to say that bugs are high priority and other things are less high priority. Um, and so I don't have really strong ideas about what's the best format for this, um, but for now I'm going to go through this board and ask for opinions on whether things are clear. And if someone's got suggestions for how we can run this better or cleaner, I'm all ears. So let's take a look. Um, some of these, yeah, we'll make sure that everything's got labels. Um, suppress RMW implementations when building. Uh, um, oh, this does have the enhancement label. Why am I not seeing? Am I seeing it in this other view? If only the chime helpers were not in the way of me clicking on the tab. Um, well, I'm definitely seeing a different view here, but it does have the enhancement label on it. Interesting. OK, I'm going to just filter for bugs right now as a first pass. Uh, Okay, so looking at cross compile, Python 3 dev is not installed by Rossbag. I'm trying to build Foxy. This was reported, oh, by me. Great, so I should understand this. Um, well, I think that this is something that I just need to check in on again. This was a while ago, but I was trying to build the Foxy source and inside one of the build containers. Um, Python 3 was not installed manually. I'm guessing that this is resolved, so I'm just going to assign this to um, me and move it into in progress uh, to check. Uh, assign to me to validate whether this is the case. Don't want to spend too much time on it, but 
seems fairly clear that when you try to build a Foxy from source, it did not work. So if it does work, then that bug can be closed. Um, okay. So we've got test respect to play and end flaky. Um, are we still seeing this flakiness, Karsten? I know that we've put in um, fixes, like a few fixes, uh, or have we just disabled it? I would assume we've disabled it. Yeah, OK. So I'm going to put this to the top of the backlog. I don't know if we have an assignee for this, but I would say just as context. That um, hmm. disabled tests seem like uh, one of those things that's in between a broken feature and a. I almost want to call it like tech debt. Do we have a label for that, or is that too much? Just say it's a bug. Thing to have more labels. That. Loans we have taken out on our future. With interest. This should be fixed. Yeah, we put in the, the backport to, um, this is in Rospec 2, and that was last month. And we definitely put in a backport for, where did that open up? If I said, I split. Okay, so in the runs here, they were failing on Flake 8. Oh, and we disabled Flake 8. Is it enabled still, or um, is it still disabled? Because we definitely backported the fix. Um, let's see, sometime yesterday. No. Okay, uh, this is an easy one. Uh, just a heads up, I already submitted an SRU at Ubuntu, so Flake 8 should be updated to uh, fix the Flake 8 3.8 issues. Oh, great. Yeah, I think our issue here was that it, it changed some internal API that we were calling, and so Ament Flake 8 was, um, was broken against Flake 8 3.8, um, and I think that we have that fix uh, there and backported to the previous distros. So. If, what, what were the, the issues on the, the upstream? Was it that it changed an API that it shouldn't have on a stable distro, or? No, uh, the last minute bump in uh, Ubuntu Focal to Python 3.8 left the Flake 8 version at Flake 8.3.7. So it didn't support the new language features. I see, OK. This Fixed, just re enable, uh, Oh, this is on Action Rossland. Um, we're all okay here. I think other things are passing just fine. Um, we disabled it on Rospec 2, which we should re enable. Um, so maybe I should be opening that on, on Rospec. Um, I'm just going to action item myself. Unless someone else wants to take it on. Um, and 
Let's see, how can we verify really quickly that this is fixed before I just close it? Um, we should look at something that's using Action Ross Lint and has. Uh, oh, yeah. I think I know what we did. I think we fixed. I think we pinned the version. Um, not positive. But it's good to check on this stuff. Request. Well, OK. I don't know. I don't want you to just watch me like, crawling through. Well, yeah, I'll just say that uh, within a couple of days, most likely, the version in Ubuntu of Flake 8 is going to be 3.8 or higher. So. OK. So if I, before closing, um, assign it so that we know that somebody's responsible. Um, this one, I believe we validated that it was, um, okay, so it was, I, I was saying I was confused about the behavior of topic statistics, uh, which was that the age of messages for messages that didn't have timestamps was NAN, and I was expecting it to just not publish. Um, I believe we said, uh, we did add it to the wiki, which, so this should probably get closed. Um, um, okay, so do we say Nan in here anywhere? No. Um, Devin, can you clarify this behavior? Um, did we say anything about it? I'm putting it in the tutorial uh, as we speak. Um, okay. Oh, you can see it in the third paragraph in behavior, but empty should probably be changed to NAN. We can change that with a, a simple PR. Okay, cool. Um, so I'll just say um, to change empty data to NAN. Cool. Okay, that'll be a really small resolution. Um, so I'm going to say that this, I'm just going to sign this one to you. Uh, so that we can uh, just get it dealt with. And we'll have to figure out how we want to um, deal with it, especially these like little one-off chores that have some personal context. So we want to assign them to individual people. We'll have to figure out how we pull them into our internal team like tracking. But for now, I think it's uh, good to just assign us things and make sure we take care of them. Um, Uh, this got still slow. It's not as bad as Sim, but so not granular enough for simple tests. Maybe it's granular enough for um, actual tests, though. Um, like maybe if the the message age is less than a millisecond, we don't care most of the time. That was just I was doing QA and I was realizing that all. Oh, all of my message latency was getting reported as a zero or one, um, which meant that I really didn't have much understanding of what it actually was. Um, what do we want to do for this? Do we want to just close it out and say if this is the granularity of the feature right now? Um, because it's probably not a bug. And I don't know if I personally care if we've gotten a feature request from someone else to get a more granular um, topic statistics. I don't know. People, people sometimes just close them as a comment, like um, works as designed or something. Well, it could be changed, but it would be like changing like the design or concept. Yeah, this is designed with, yeah, thanks. Yeah, there hasn't been any discussion about this on the follow-up meta ticket. Or other requests. Um, if we want to change the design. That's good. Useless tickets are worse than no tickets. 
PDS node name not new, unique on ROSPEG2. So I want to make sure that we don't run out of time. So we'll get back to where we are here. But does anybody know which one are the performance tickets for um, Adam's presentation? Because I would like to make sure we take a look at those and that they're workable. Um, so. I think he listed a few issue numbers. No, oh, that's not it. Um, well, just looking at GitHub, um, I'm seeing 437 configuration for SQLite. Uh, 436 improving performance through asynchronous storage rights. And I think the big one is the performance testing of Rospec2. That's 435. Okay. 435, 6, and 7. I thought there were three improvements because this one is the, uh, the one that's tracking his whole. Uh... Yeah, I think one which is not explicitly marked is the, um, the re indexing of, of the database after, after oh, the has... write. Has that one not been created? Uh, transactions for every write. Okay, so oh, cache based on elapsed recording time. That was part of his um, uh, suggestions. Okay, and then uh, I could also use some help reviewing uh, the performance. Um, uh, this is off topic for grooming the thing, but I think we also want to discuss how we want to uh, maybe round robin reviews and maybe require two reviewers on everything. In the working group, I know we have a reviewers group. I think we'll need to um, evaluate it. I think we added some AWS folks who shouldn't be on there because they uh, we kind of just did it automatically to get some right access. But um, how do you all feel about making a um, Auto assign reviewers on all of these packages for uh, the reviewers and approvers groups um, within the, the the working group. That way, we can kind of look at who's assigned and and ping people, uh, and hopefully get a reasonable rotation on it. And it feels like a good process. I mean, all it does is generate more email um, and notify people. People can always remove themselves. I mean, that's true. My worry would be uh, people feel like they're getting spammed. Um, yeah, I don't. I wouldn't worry about it. But whatever. What does everybody else think? Not a lot of thoughts. Uh, <laughs> so I'm gonna do that then, uh, if, barring any complaint, and we'll see. And then if there are complaints, I can happily uh, change it. I mean, we can we can totally do that, but I think for especially like the performance the performance improvements for ROS bags, um, I mean that should be most likely one of, one of us who actually knows what's happening. I mean, like yeah. a random assignment for like uh, a like a, a performance improvement. I'm not sure if that's the best thing for. Yeah, for absolutely. Us. Although there are actually very few of us on the on the approvers list, um, or at least there will be once we've um, pruned the ones that got sort of auto added. Um, so it'll probably be like you and me and Devin and uh, um, I'm actually not sure who else would be on there. <laughs> um, however, for this one, I could use some help reviewing it just because those 5,000 lines. Like I realize it's a lot of config files, but it's just a lot to look at. I could use another pair of eyes to help me catch uh, stuff <laughs> if you yeah, would be willing. It's, to it's definitely on my list. Uh, yeah, okay. Available. It's been on my list for a while too. I'm just going to put you on here with me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, so there's that. Um, okay, so I want to make sure that these belong to. Um, I wonder if I can performance testing. Okay, yeah, I don't want to do performance testing. What I want to do is I want to make a new. Um, uh, I don't want to do either of these things. I want to create a new, yeah, epic which is um, this epic is a grouping mechanism for, or do we just want a performance label? I think performance label might actually be easier to see. Um, uh, 
performance. Cool. Um, let's make it. We do have a tech deck label. Or did you just create that? I just I created it while, oh. while you were watching. I, I looked away. I, I apologize for not being attentive. That's OK. Uh, there we go. That's different from other things. Um, OK, so let's say labels perf. This is an older one. Um, and it just wants to say that we're capable of writing raw data, raw camera streams. Okay, this is from about a year ago. Um, we don't have a specific resolution for this, uh, but some of our improvements might help. I'm going to, yeah, just move this to the bottom for now, and we'll deal with these other ones and then come back to that later. Um, Okay, so cache based on elapsed strict recording time. Uh, the current instance, the max cache. Per oh, I think that the real improvement was having a default value that wasn't zero. Um, I don't know if we have an issue open for that. Or he says. I would also suggest changing the default value. It might be nice to have two separate tickets for that. Um, so I'm going to make we, a new We've been actually talking about this. Uh, changing a default value from 0 to 1 doesn't make any difference. Because by default, the, the difference here between 0 and 1 is really that we, in case it's 1, we explicitly call a begin transaction. And we actually later on looked into like documentation of SQLite says, like, OK, if you don't explicitly call begin transaction, and we'll just do it for you. I see. So the, the difference between 0 and 1 is really actually no, no difference. I thought the request was for a larger than, because is that cache uh, by in bytes? Like one byte of cache, yeah. It's, it's, not the it's per message. It's per message. Oh. And so that's, one, that's the one other message. thing which, yeah, we, we might have to address that anyway, because like it's, it's certainly different to have like a cache size of a 1,000 if you record like point clouds versus you know some, some images or whatnot. Exactly. Yeah. OK, so. Um, but that needs a little bit more love, maybe by time, or maybe by maybe by byte sizes. I don't know. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah, it might be. To me, it makes sense, like, not as a message count, but as a size. Um, an amount of time is also useful for a, from a usage perspective, from an implementation perspective. I feel like a, a byte size makes a lot of sense. That way, you sort of have a, a runtime predictable uh, usage. Uh, so, what should do? What should we do here? I know that it, it will improve our performance a lot if we do some caching before writing. So, should we just decide to say? I mean, maybe we make an issue that has a, a larger default cache size, but it's not based on the count of messages or something. Is this similar to like raw snapshot where you just want to keep a certain size in memory and then someone could use it later to start dumping things? Uh, I mean, I think that's the idea. You just want to queue up some of your writes so that when you're um, writing to the database, you can like be doing work at the same time. And if you have the producer consumer, um, yeah, the idea is just writing every single message is the lowest performance uh, option for the database. OK, well, I have uh, um, this one's that that producer consumer scheme. Um, I think it makes perfect sense. Is there any uh, objection to the suggestion that we spin off a different thread to do um, writing and th then the one that's uh, getting messages? Probably not. OK, this one could go into the backlog and get the performance label and um, I think we're going to apply help wanted to all of these. Um, I think what I'd like to do from our from the AWS side is commit to one of these performance enhancements um, before the next meeting. Um, we definitely don't have enough bandwidth to work on all of them, but uh, I think it makes a lot of sense for us to uh, take on at, at least one, as a, especially like a good faith and continued working. Um, I know that Apex had some need for these improvements quickly. I don't know if we can meet the quickly, but we can go as fast as we can. Uh, 
Um, so configuration. Journal mode, synchronous. Uh, so yeah, we wanted to expose these and maybe even change the default. Uh, that makes perfect sense to me. Uh, I think that uh, the way um, uh, based on discussion during breakout meeting, uh, we said that we wanted to give the storage plugins a way to provide a, uh, some, some hook into their configuration. Maybe that makes sense from the like CLI level, like a performance. Um, or maybe we just make like a performance config arg, and the config can always be in YAML, and then they can translate that however they need. I guess we don't have to design it here, but. Uh, yeah, the, the way the way I imagined that was like I can pass in a generic storage storage parameter file or something, um, and then it's essentially up to the to the plugin to the storage plugin to decide how to interpret these parameters. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Because um, we only have a limited set of types of plugins. I was trying to maybe think of a more generic way, but we're not going to be dynamically adding plugin types. You know, we've only got a few. We've got the transport and the storage and the. Is there anything else? As a storage plugin? Or... No, as a as a type of plugin that Rossbag deals with. Like we use plugins for the storage system. I think that the transport layer is also treated as a plugin, but is anything else? I, I don't think that the transport is. Oh, it's as, just it's as just storage. Your, the, the compression, the compression would yeah, be. Yeah, compression. Uh, yeah. Okay. So anyway, so we've got a limited set. We could have like compression parameters and storage plant parameters. Like that's not a big deal. Um, I was just thinking if if the types of plugins started to get large, then the command line interface might start to get too large. Um, but as it is, uh, storage implementation can reinterpret this, uh, which is great. Um, is there something I want to? I know this is design discussion here, but should we have a way for the storage plugin to? expose what values it'll take, or should it just document that on its readme for the given plugin? That probably makes the most sense. And it can you know, throw an error if the value is not acceptable. OK, I won't worry about that. Um, put this on the backlog. Uh, and then I want to have, I think, a new issue that is, um, does this make sense cache based on uh, actual memory size? I mean that should be that should be fairly fairly trivial. Um, yeah, I hope so. Given that we get given that we get the 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 data anyway already as a serialized message, so we actually just have to count the the size of the buffer, which is corresponding to one byte. Um, I mean that should be. Yeah, exactly. Relatively straightforward. Um, with this, do you think we would remove the message count caching? Because now we're starting to think about sort of three different caching schemas. Like one is message count, one is data size, and one is time. I would remove the message count then, because okay. it really doesn't make much sense to my opinion. Um, option. Um, consider how this might live side by side with um, hash by time. Uh, we do have that same sort of split with uh, uh, bag splitting 
like we've got split by size and split by time now, and it's I think whichever comes first usually. So maybe we can just do that here. Um, okay, related issues. I think that this is related to performance testing. criteria I mean um, uh, uh, writing cash clears when it has HD invites realized message has the buffer size so it should be simple addition. Not really using that to its full capacity, but we can go through and improve that at some point. Um, okay, so that was one, two, three, and then uh, we also had uh, cash based on time, which I think I'm less concerned about as an immediate priority um, because I don't think it hits the performance aspect as well. Uh, you guys agree? Yes, I guess. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, I'm going to say help on it. Oh, and I'll say is related to that. I'm confused by formatting. Cool. Um, and so from our side, Devin, what do you think uh, we should pick up? I think we should pick up one of these three issues uh, in this sprint. Which one do you think is more uh, or most appropriate for us to grab? Do you have any opinion? No, I don't. OK. <laughs> um, I think maybe we'll pick up this um, uh, memory size one. It's uh, I don't let's see, how do I assign uh, us? I'll just assign me for now, and then we'll figure out who the assignee is. And that way, at least I know it's on, on my list of assigned issues. You can um, assign multiple people. Just assign everybody. No. <laughs> Good call. I'll no, sign all three of us, and then we can. Oh wait, what's Jesse's? Um... Uh, I don't know. Oh, he might not be on the working group. Uh, I'll have to add him after the fact. Um, Perfect. Yeah. Uh, so I don't, I don't see him this morning. He must be uh, up to something else. But our our teammate Jesse is not here, and we've sort of focused down on the AWS side. That we'll have uh, me, Devin, and Jesse. Uh, more full time on the open source stuff. So um, we've, we've uh, focused in our group a little bit rather than having a lot of people working uh, some smaller percentage of their time on it. Uh, so that's just for everyone else's context. Uh, you'll see the, the three of us more involved in these things and, and less from the other folks, uh, which probably is not nothing from the others. But anyways, uh, so we'll take on this one this sprint. Does anybody uh, else want to? Uh, uh, commit to any of the, um, I guess we'll put this in progress because that's how we can use the, the Kanban board for this uh, working group is just say that in progress means that somebody's got it on their plate and is working on it. Um, Good question, Emerson, just on how much we're pulling in for Amazon specifically. Uh, how many bugs are, are because there's, there's a lot of bugs there. Right. There's a lot of bugs. We're just grabbing one right now. Okay. Cool. Oh, sorry. There were a couple of other like very quick one-offs that I'm going to take care of, um, but I'm not even thinking about pulling them into anything officially. Okay. Yeah. They're more chores. I do a bunch of those every day. Uh, cool. Um, yeah. So we're just pulling in the one for now to commit to, and if we have more time, although I don't think we will in these two weeks, we can pull in more. Um, yeah. Does um. I don't know, Karsten, how's your workload? Do you have any time for performance stuff, or should I mark them help wanted? 
Yeah, so I, I definitely wanted to use the um, I'll take the take the consumer producer thing, the asynchronous right to to this. Yeah, that's um, fine. Yeah, uh, you can assign this to me. Um, cool. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. I will get that done in the next two weeks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's not a it's not a hard commitment. It's more like if you're if you're working on this, we we no one else will do, will start on it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. No, I'll take that one. Cool. Uh, sounds good. And then we'll um, send out the the call for help for the third one. Um, maybe we should provide a. a or like a link on the um uh the, what do you call it the the community page do you think people find the community page i don't know um like i've been using that as the central place to describe what this is about but um, maybe it's really just the calendar invite is the primary source of information for most people well for Kata, where's the community page uh ross tooling <laughs> slash community uh I, I bet that a lot of people don't go there yeah, if you go to Ross Tooling, um, community is the first uh, pinned repository. But yeah, I'm guessing a lot of people don't go here. Yeah. It is maybe not the place, but it does sort of mark out how we actually communicate. Uh, I made a matrix channel. No, we don't use that. But you know, I'm there if anyone wants to ping me. <laughs> I think it would be good to, to send out, like, especially for help wanted, like if we are actually just polling uh, and maybe a Discord po course post saying, here's a link to all the help one and ones in the tooling group. Yeah, maybe. I think that makes sense. I do post after every meeting. So after this meeting, we could say, here's some things we identified that we would like help with uh, if you, the community wants to participate. Yeah, great idea. Um, OK, so that would be this one. Um, and put that on action items. Um, uh, in the, the 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 summary post after the meeting, include help wanted. Um, Okay, and these have the performance label on them now. They're in the backlog. Um, this one as well, we might as well. Um, lower priority, but uh, should be useful if we do it. Okay, that is some stuff. Uh, okay, so there's only 10 bugs we haven't looked at in the new issues queue. I think that it'll take us a few meetings to get up to speed on this, but if like this is our priority, then um, it's kind of makes for boring meetings, but uh, it's probably of high value to present these things to the community. Like, here's what we think are important and we need help with. Um, Rossbag2 needs you to join the... Um, Join the logging re revolution? Sure, that sounds right. Thank you. <laughs> OK. The node name is always this, but the DDS spec, well, it does not require unique node names. Um, oh, and I said I was inclined to close this as not an issue uh, because we had just spent some time on node name uniqueness around June. Um, we added some warnings to the CLI and to launch that said you're you're launching notes with the same uh, name, but uh, you're perfectly allowed to do that. Um, uh, I think that this makes sense as an enhance. Do we expose um, like any services or actions from the Rossbag 2 node, Kirsten? Um, I don't think so yet. Yeah, I guess it would expose by default the parameter services, um, but that's since true. we're not since we're not using those, it doesn't matter. But that's the one thing that duplicate nodes really messes with is that um, service names are based on node name, and so you can't know definitively what node you're going to hit when you call a service for two nodes that have the same name. Um, you you will get at random one of them servicing the request. 
So that's fun. Um, so I don't think we have a functionality problem, but I think that this is a very simple enhancement. Um, I'm going to say name prospect to node uniquely. And I'm just going to edit. It doesn't hurt to edit bugs, does it? I feel like making them more readable is always Rust XLR Spec 2. Um, this doesn't affect the functionality in any harmful way currently, but <coughs> it is suboptimal. Um, not very clean, and if we ever do expose services or actions for asking to interaction, then it will become a problem. Okay, so um, add some unique suffix prefix to Oh yeah, that'd be cool um, to ask Cat for um, using that channel. Cool. Um, and I'm just going to put help wanted on this. Um, oh, and this is probably a good first issue, which we should also be using, because um, this one seems pretty easy, if I'm not uh, mistaken. Um, okay, so that was, there's no copy link ads. I'll just, uh, I can go through after the fact, and anything we put help wanted on, we can just put it on that list. So as long as we use the label, we're good. Um, okay, we're running close to the end on time. Um, we have time to keep going through these things. I think that we'll focus on this next meeting. Um, I think that another thing that would be nice as a mechanism would be to have more breakout meetings. I really liked the performance breakout meeting last week. Uh, I've personally been wanting to get some feedback on my design for the future of the cross-compile tool. So I don't know, would you guys be interested in using this same time on the opposite Fridays to uh, have meetings like that occasionally? Sounds good. Cool. I think we, maybe even we go so far as to, to schedule it and, and cancel it when we don't have something to talk about. Like, I, it feels like the breakout which went so well, we might want to kind of try and schedule them in advance and have one every time. Uh, yeah, we can try to do that. Let's um, let's put that as an action item for realsies. Um, schedule um, opposite Friday. Um, recurring breakout sessions. So we can use this meeting to do housekeeping and sort of present the, the primary purpose here, which is to have a good useful backlog for the community to help, and then have the breakout meetings for um, specific topics, presentations. Because with our biweekly meetings, yeah, it felt like a 20 minute presentation meant we didn't have much time to do any of this housekeeping. And I think that we'll have folks who are interested in different sides of the topic and can attend as they like if the meetings themselves are split out rather than uh, within a given meeting. Yeah, we, we just have to be very clear about what uh, is going to be there so people know whether or not they want to attend while in advance. Yeah. Um, yeah, also, if I sign up for uh, <laughs> for a breakout meeting ahead of time, then it will give me time pressure to actually write up that design instead of just having it in my head. Um, with topics um, planned up ahead of time, meetings canceled when no discussion. OK, sounds good to me. Um, anything else anyone wanted to talk about today? Otherwise, I've been I've been liking to um, cut off uh, video meetings at five before the hour so that 
those of us who have to go to another meeting have a time for a water break before their next on the hour starts. Because we are all work from home now. No, nothing? Okay, I appreciate everyone being here today. Thank you. Bye bye. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, I know it was three before, five before the hour, but felt like getting into the next thing.